gather around God's Word, a reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I say, What shall I cry? All peoples are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. This Isaiah Advent prophecy brings us to a time when hope was waning with the people and their God in Israel. They were at that point a down culture. Slaves in Babylon, if you know your modern geography, they now were at the bottom of the Sinai Peninsula. They had been taken there as captives. Jerusalem, their home, was in the north. It was up in Canaan. But it had been burned to the ground, and Isaiah was writing after three generations had lived in this peninsula. And surely the people said now, God, we believe, has forgotten us. Or even worse, God remembers us still and is still punishing us for the sins of our ancestors. We believe God has lost control. Well, One would think in some ways that Isaiah is writing to December 10th, 2014. We seem so close to that dilemma, do we not? Our country seems stalled at certain points. Some do ask, is God no longer active and present in our land? And then if not careful, we fall into some lackadaisical pessimism. And few folks, as you know, have lost hope entirely. However, listen to the vision of Isaiah from God. God gives comfort in these times. Isaiah said, God does act. And sure enough, you know from your scripture, you know from ancient history, that indeed the people returned back to Jerusalem. God did deliver them. Yes, only a few, a remnant came back. But the temple was rebuilt. And Yahweh did restore hope to the people. Now for me, the excitement begins. At least I get excited about the turn of events in biblical history. The words of the prophet Isaiah are coming back to us many centuries later, which, according to my thinking, means that God all that time has been alive and has been active. For this week's texts, when put together, 
link the proclamation and the prophecy of Isaiah with the words that are coming out of the mouth of a gentleman by the name of John the Baptist. And John said there would be a highway again. Now, interesting, Isaiah talks about a highway, but his highway came from the Sinai up to Jerusalem. John begins to say to us today, the believers are now the highway. We have become the highway that fulfills God's promise to take us into eternal life. John saying, repent, turn around, be open. Let the God of your baptismal waters, let that love get into you so that it can flow through you to other people. John said, there is someone coming after me. Someone you want to know. So we visit the question again today, which is, is God alive now? Is there any hope? John the Baptist says today, Oh yes, God is alive because Isaiah's words are so true and I can tell you that right now because I am acting on behalf of that fulfillment. And that's going to come to pass because of us who are Christians. Therefore, my friends, we become the highway we become the hope of the world. Because no one else understands and has the belief that we do that God does continue to give goodness, love, and hope to the world's people. We are not the hopeless ones in the world. We are the ones who can show hope to the world. Christians are the only ones, therefore we must step up and use the gift of hope. Praying for and uplifting one another, when there is grief, accident, death, changes in the world's conditions, it is us as believers who gather round. I use Trinity as a microcosm. Indeed, we are both willing and we are anxious to serve in whatever way God asks us. Why? Because we believe that God, that same God of Isaiah and John, is active still today, but through us. So, God is not dead unless we Christians allow God to die. Every day, you and I pray the words, Your kingdom come. But how often do I pause, and this is confession from me, how often do I pause and look for the signs of the kingdom that are around me? Maybe, just maybe, my ears and my eyes get a little dull. And maybe, just maybe, God is quite alive. And I'm too busy, I'm too tired, I'm too anxious to always notice the goodness of God. So this is a good week of worship for us. Because taking Isaiah's vision and John the Baptist's reality, they've caused us to look at the good that happens to each of us every day. And I find that good here. I find that good here at Trinity every day. I've told you that before. I hope you find it here as well. See, this community, Christian community of faith, acts on the vision of Isaiah and on John the Baptist each day. Trouble is, sometimes we get lazy to look for it. Or we just do it and don't think about it. Or indeed, sometimes we seem to forget. <laughs> but I hear John speaking Isaiah's words, says, well then, wake up. See the good folks around you. Thank those good folks who care for you. You know that we all love you and they love you and you love them. 
Now would you please tell the rest of the world? So my friends, here again, the ancient proclamation written just for you and me on December 10th, 2014. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. A blessed advent to each of you while we serve, waiting for the child to come to us yet again. Thanks be to God. Amen.